I've always been curious what place or which country or even what culture different regions within Teyvat were gonna take on based on the real life countries and regions we have in our own world. And I'm not just talking about countries. I'm talking specific buildings and architecture that they have. The idea of what the new regions' towns and villages would look like and what inspirations would it have based on what's currently in our modern world. So before Sumeri comes out, which we have no idea when, maybe 2.9, 2.10, I thought I'd theorize or throw some rough guesses on what Sumeri's design is gonna look like. So without further ado, let's get to it. Since I think Hoyoverse wouldn't generally stick to one country or part of the world, especially with Sumeru with such wide history and so many inspirations to take from, I'm gonna base more of their inspirations from the old Iraq, Iran, and Egypt, which is, of course, Babylon, Persia, and um, ancient Egypt. Now don't come at me in the comments saying that I'm inaccurate because I know I am. But these three areas, regions, countries, kingdoms, whatever you would call it, are basically where I would put Sumeru or where I would think Sumeru's inspirations would come from. Now the first place you would know about Sumeru in Genshin is the Sumeru Academia, which I think is based off of the huge center and focus for learning within the Babylonian Empire. Another thing about Sumer civilizations, that's right, Sumer and not Sumeru, is that they built their cities along rivers. Which, surprise surprise, right there behind Liwe is a river which is speculated to be where Sumeru is gonna be. Now Sumeru itself to me wouldn't have pyramids but maybe they will depending on what Hoyoverse would think of. But that's to say that it wasn't based off of Egypt. If however they had some inspirations from Egypt, then the structures as well as their layouts would be a mix of the three old kingdoms or empires. See the buildings or houses of Sumer, Egypt, and Babylon were relatively similar, especially for the build and how they would look like. Oftentimes they would use mud and clay as well as stone laid on top of each other like bricks as well as using bitumen or more commonly called asphalt as the mortar to stick them together, similar to how concrete houses in the modern day are built. Now one common feature you would see from the Sumer structures are the arches, domes, and vaults, which are these three things. But once Babylon came in, they introduced a new architectural feature on top of what I just said. So after the arches, domes, and vaults, they added what's called pilasters, which are basically fake columns, to add a bit of ornamentality to the bland and open walls that they used to make. They also had what's called recesses, which are again, fake windows or fake holes in the wall. And now for my favorite feature that they added, which are glazed bricks. Now glazed bricks are basically these colorful tiles. And I'm pretty sure they are going to be a big part of Sumeru's design and aesthetic. Because glazed bricks are essentially shiny colored bricks. And the Babylonians put that on a lot of their structures. Especially the palaces, the gates, the temples, and even towers. Like guard towers. Now, if we relate everything I said to the modern Iran, Iraq, or maybe even Egypt. I hope I didn't butcher any of those. <clears throat> you would see tons of these on each of their style. With Egypt being more of the odd duck, using more inclined structures called batters, as well as using carvings and etchings instead of glazed blocks like I said a while ago. But all I've said here are only for the more common and normal structures as well as the default house designs and roads and maybe even inns and bars within the city of Sumeru. But if we were talking about more grand things, like palaces and temples, and especially castles, then my best bet would be the ziggurat, the hanging gardens, the Ishtar gate, and maybe some pyramids and Egyptian sphinxes, as well as temples, and finally, the Babel Tower. So when it comes to the grandiose and regalness of certain things, all three of the mentioned kingdoms have a very keen sense of the word. First up, you have the Sumerians making these fortress-like temples called ziggurats, which were used for worship and I quote, to connect with the heavens. So maybe in Genshin's context, they would use this temple to interact with Celestia, or to be more connected with the gods, however you would perceive what I said. The look and the aesthetic of the ziggurat is nothing to scoff at either. I mean look at this thing, wouldn't a domain or final cutscene with like a trans boss there be awesome? Imagine the Dendro Archon calling a god from who knows where 
and one of the seven Sumer gods, which is um, actually real if you look it up, comes down to the Ziggurat temple and deems you unworthy. Suddenly, spiraling flames erupt and the newest boss you meet greets you with its indescribable design. Sumer mythology is pretty vast and they have some pretty powerful main gods as well called the gods who decree. These ziggurats could also be a good place for a sort of council of seven leaders representing the seven Sumer gods coming together and then talking with the traveler or discussing with each other how they're going to address the problem within Sumeru. Second, you have Babylonians with their glazed temples and structures, shining with vibrant hues of blue, green, and maybe even yellow. Usually, turquoise tiles and brick walls lays to look like lions or other creatures in the wilds. Along with gatehouses with yellow brick and sand towers, with the front of the gates being glazed with blue tiles. Along with that, powerful sentinels guarding the entrance. The Ishtar Gate is the best depiction of glazed bricks being used in Babylonian architecture. Another of their prized treasures is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, considered one of the seven wonders of the world and built by the greatest king of Babylon's, Nebuchadnezzar II. Nebuchadnezzar II. But the Hanging Gardens didn't only have flowers and plants as their main attraction, because the entirety of the structure was carefully placed to be aesthetically pleasing wherever you were looking and whichever part of the garden you were in. Now imagine the traveler walking into the Hanging Gardens for the first time and while wandering you see a silhouette of a person you start to follow this silhouette and after some time of following and tailing you find out that it was the dendro archon all along or maybe it was one of the new husbando slash waifus you first meet in Sumeru. This could also be a place for some idle chat with other NPCs, as well as characters that you can speak to within the region. Safe to say that if a location like this was added into Sumeru, you can be sure that the events after will be filled with a lot of characters that are here to meet you. Second to the last, the awe-inspiring yet very mysterious Babel Tower. Another grand Babylonian structure, of course, said to be created with the goal of making a name for the people of Babylon, which was built within a great mighty city where the tower itself was supposed to have its top in the heavens. But to their surprise, God himself disrupted it from being finished by changing everyone's language. The whole city fell apart and everyone left to go around different places of the world. This was the myth for why everyone in the world speak in different languages, but we all know which is true now do we? The interesting bit about this tower is how God himself interrupted the Babylonians who were building it. Making a Babel Tower inspired location in Genshin would have a very cool story development behind it. For one, you could have another destroyed kingdom similar to Vindagnir, Ankanomia, Kanria, and maybe even the city in the chasm. Think of a spiraling tower with weird clouds on top and the Skyfrost nail right in the middle of the tower and you have another new theory video template for the next 3 patches. Other than that, this can also be similar to the ziggurat scenario but maybe it failed due to unknown reasons and maybe the people of Sumeru encountered a problem before it finished. Maybe the god of woods decided to make this tower but sadly he died before it was finished. Regardless of how it would have gone in the Genshin world, a tower to reach godhood being hidden or lost in time would be great for exploration, story building, and of course more theories. Egyptian architecture compared to the other two are in a word very geometrical and more inspired by carvings than glazed bricks when it comes to character and style. The key difference you would see is that their houses and even castle walls and gate structures having a sort of tapering effect as it gets taller. This was said to have been done so they could keep enemies from destroying or knocking down the walls. A short scenario is that if a wall was standing upright, then you would have an easier time knocking it down compared to a wall that's already inclined into the castle. The guards on top of the tower and its walls would have better sightlines as well, especially if there were intruders under the wall itself. Egyptian structures like pylons were less colorful than the glazed gates of Babylon, but they did have carvings of their gods in the form of different creatures, as well as a lot of their more known and famous architectural feats being tombs and temples. 
that were either cave-like or literally carved from mountains. Which leads us to our final bit with the Egyptians and their pyramids that are in and of themselves a marvel to see in-game. And even more because we can literally climb the pyramid and climb the Sphinx's face. Now I don't see sphinxes being put in Sumeru though, but hey, tell me in the comments how that would go. The numerous pyramids however, as well as the carved temples and caves made by the ancient Egyptians would be a great design choice for domains and dungeons. Now I'm not saying that they won't look good as friendly temples or houses, but the goals of the ancient Egyptians for making their grand structures were very unlike what Celestia would want. Even their smallest tombs, which were built for those who died, were built that way so that they could ascend into the heavens with their possessions in tow. They even invented the ritual of mummification to become immortal which, if we put into Genshin context, is pretty sus when you're one of the gods of Celestia. Some of their more prominent temples and cave temples had sculptural carvings of their Egyptian emperor as well. I don't mean to offend anyone, but the sheer ambition of the ancient Egyptians were straight on the money, especially when comparing it to what Khan and the Abyss Order would be doing in Genshin. So their structures being used for the more hidden and secretive parts of Sumeru is where I'd put it, along with immortality being a very sensitive topic, especially to a region in Tevet whose sole purpose is studying. Now I could already think of the traveler running into one of these temples or pyramids and find either an old relic on how to gain immortality or some knowledge about the gods in Celestia, or maybe finding the Abyss Order being in one of them searching for clues and how to beat Celestia itself. But again, speculations and guesses as usual, especially for a theory for a region that we have no idea when is going to come out. But there you have it, my take on what I think Sumeru would look like and what superstructures as well as different architecture it would have based on the certain empires and kingdoms we speculated Hoyaverse would take inspiration from. Like I said, this is just theory and <laughs> the reason for making this video is I needed some motivation for my uni. But hey, new video for you guys to enjoy, right? So, I hope you actually enjoyed my ramblings again. Comment below what you guys think of Sumeru and what's it going to look like or what countries in real life it would be based on. As always, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel since I'm almost at 1k subscribers. And lastly, click on that bell icon so you can catch more of my videos every time I upload a new one. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, bye!